Before any of us or this entire massive universe was here, there was an originator who brought it all into existence. Who is this originator, this creator? What is the purpose of our creation? Are there any other beings outside of our planet? How did it all begin? This is the beginning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, all listeners. And welcome to the channel where we narrate the stories reported in the Quran and by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But we deliver them to you here in storytelling format. So if that's something that you like, please make sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our new uploads. So let's get right into it. ويرسل عليكم حفظة حتى إذا جاء أحدكم الموت توفته رسلنا حتى إذا جاء أحدكم الموت توفته رسلنا وهم لا يفرطون Allah then created the first living animated creature on a Wednesday. The Malaika, translated as the angels. These honored servants are created from the elements of pure light. And the purpose of their existence is to carry out Allah's decrees. The first from among the angelic creatures that the Almighty created was Jibreel. He was created free from any defect in body and mind. Then he rose and became stable. Some of the qualities of the Malaika are they don't have any pride. They don't feel envy, nor do they have physical desires such as eating, drinking, or mating. They are completely incapable of disobeying Allah. They only do exactly as they are commanded. And they never grow bored or tired of worshipping Him and celebrating His praises. That being said, they are not emotionless robots. They do have personalities, preferences, likes and dislikes. The Malaika's appearance can be described as beautiful, yet powerfully Dominant beings, mighty and massive in size. Some are as large as mountains, while many others are much larger. Some have two wings, some have three wings, some have four pairs, and some Allah increased with many more as He wills. Allah has given them the ability to take on forms different from their angelic form. Jibril has 600 wings, which have jewels, pearls, and rubies constantly falling from them. And he sits on a huge throne that Allah provided for him. Allah has also created four malaika who bear Allah's throne. Each is described as one in the form of a man, one in the form of a lion, one in the form of a bull, and one in the form of an eagle. And on the day of resurrection, Allah will send four more malaika to support them. Their size is so titanic. The distance between one of the malaika's earlobes and shoulders is a journey of 700 years. Now bear in mind, the malaika are only carrying the weight of the arsh itself. It does not befit Allah, the Lord of all creation, to rest on a throne. Rather, He rose above it. Allah is the Most High. He is distinct from all of His creation, and nothing can encompass Him. All the Malaika have specific roles and duties. Jibreel, the highest ranking of them all, is given the task of sending down revelation from Allah to all the messengers sent to earth. 
He also brings punishment to the nations that reject the signs and revelation or become aggressive towards the prophets and the believers. Mikael is responsible for provision and the forces of nature. Sustenance, rain, winds. He is the Melik chosen to move them when and where Allah commands him to do so. Israfil is appointed to blow on the trumpet when the day of judgment begins. His lips are currently on the trumpet waiting for the command from Allah. Malik al Mot, translated as the Angel of Death. Him and his assistants are responsible for taking our souls on the precise time that it has been written and decreed. And they never neglect or fall short on their duty. Some Jewish sources mention a name for him, but no name has been confirmed. There are Malaika assigned as the keepers of paradise. And one of the greatest of them is a Malik known as Chazin, translated as the keeper. Many even refer to him as Ridwan, which can be translated as grace, pleasure, and satisfaction. He has been commanded not to open the gates for anyone before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. While some of the other malaika in paradise are in charge of preparing the honors and welcoming gifts for its inhabitants, such as garments, jewelry, dwellings, food, drinks, and other things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor crossed any human mind. Hell has been assigned 19 malaika to guard it. The main guardian from them is Malik, who is a severe Malik that has no remorse, nor does he feel any mercy for the people being tormented in it. And Malik hasn't smiled since hell was created. Allah assigned four malaika to each of us. One Malik over our right shoulder, who records all of our good deeds, while the Malik over our left shoulder records all of our bad deeds, both major and minor. These noble Malaika write everything, and not a single word or expression is uttered except that it is documented. However, when a bad deed is committed, the Malik over our left shoulder holds the pen for six hours before writing it down. If the sinner regrets and repents to Allah, then the Malik does not write down that sin. The other two Malaika guard the person they are assigned to from the front and back. Any harm that comes towards him or her, the Malaika tell it to clear off. <laughs> except for calamity or harm that Allah decreed to fall upon that person. Then the Malaika withdraw from that person. Then another four Malaika switch shifts during the night. Munkar and Nakir are two angels, each described as black and blue with a terrifying appearance. They visit the grave after the deceased is buried and interrogate them with three main questions. Asking who is your Lord? What is your religion? And what do you say about the man who was sent to you? Harut and Marut are the Malaika who Allah later sent down to Babylon to test mankind. Some Malaika were created in a state of prostration, constantly celebrating his glory and praises. And they remain this way, never lifting their heads until the day of judgment. And there are many countless others 
who are unknown to us and their number is unknown to us. But what helps put things in perspective is there is a house of worship in the seventh heaven known as Al Bayt. Thanks for tuning in. If you got something out of this episode and you haven't done this already, then please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to turn on all notifications so that you don't miss any of our new uploads. You can support us on Patreon for as little as five or even three dollars a month. It helps us dedicate time into creating more quality content, and any amount is appreciated. And don't forget to share it with your family and friends. Jazakallah khairan wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.